This episode of Hack Tip is brought to you by Ops Genie. Your next incident doesn't stand a chance. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm your host, Shannon Morse, and today we are learning how to branch in our program. Now, branching in a program is when you offer choices for your program to perform. It allows your program to have different outputs depending on the data provided to it. Now, you have probably heard of something called if statements. This is basically branching. So to give you an example, you can write this example directly into your terminal. So let's take a look at my computer. I'm gonna type in x equals seven and hit enter, and nothing happens. That's to be expected. So now on the next line, I'm going to type in if, open bracket, dollar sign x equals seven, close that bracket, then, so there's my if then, echo equals seven, cool. Else, if that first part isn't true, then I will echo does not equal seven, close that, and then five. And I'm just gonna take a look at this real quick, make sure I got everything right. Oh, I need a space there. There we go. Now hit enter, and it says equals seven. Cool, so that was totally to be expected. Now, if I type in x equals two and hit enter, and then we're going to run the same thing, except I'm pretty sure I need a space here, so I'm gonna add spaces. I always forget those spaces, there we go. Then hit enter. Now it says does not equal seven, since x equals two obviously does not equal seven. Now each time that you run a command like this, you have to execute that same command. You are telling the exact same command to have different output depending on the data provided. So while my data provided here changed, that output, even though I had the spaces there, that does not change. Now if statements like this always follow the same syntax, First up, you have your if command, then commands, that's the very next part, then you have else if commands and then commands, else commands, and you end with fi, fi, which is basically if backwards. And I will write that out right here just to give you an example of what that syntax would look like. Now to show you what it looks like in a program, you can type these lines into your sysinfo program. Now I put mine up at the very top and I'll show you what that looks like on my computer here. Now, the first thing that I wanna point out is after I saved this command, after typing in this else if statement right here, this branching context, uh, you know that that context is going to be supported in your text editor if the colors change. So in gedit, you just need to make sure that your colors are changing here, else you will probably receive an error. It's just an easy way to make sure that it is working. So in my example here, first I have x equals seven, right at the top, x equals seven. So we know that the variable x is going to equal seven no matter what. Now if, this is what the program's going to run, if x does in fact equal seven, then it's going to echo out, the output is going to say x equals seven. Else, if the first part is not true, if this part is not true, else echo x does not equal seven, and then you close out this entire statement right here with fi at the end, phi. Now, if I run that command, just like I've been doing previously, you will notice, since I wrote that up at the top of the program of the shell script, it says x equals seven, because x does, in fact, equal seven. Cool, it worked. Now let's go ahead and move on to the exit status. This is how you can tell if your program is terminating correctly after it's done. The value for an exit status can be anything between zero to 255, with zero being the only positive answer. That means that it worked right. So here's an example of that actually in action. Go ahead and type into your terminal ls tacd slash usr slash bin and then hit enter and you're gonna see USR bin highlighted in whatever color you choose to make it in your bash RC script. Then you wanna type in echo dollar sign question mark and hit enter and you should get zero. So that means that it's correct. Now, if I type in lstacd slash bin slash USR, which is obviously the wrong directory and press enter, it's going to tell me that there's no such file because that does not exist. So now what happens if you type in the same thing, that echo dollar sign with a question mark? 
hit enter, and you're gonna get an error. So this tells you that two tells you that you received the wrong output because the input was incorrect as well. Commands use all sorts of different values as their exit statuses, so it won't always necessarily be a number two if it's terminated incorrectly. Sometimes the man page, for example, will tell you what exit status you will receive for any given command. So here's another one, for example. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my computer again and type in true, just true, that's it, and then hit enter. And then I'm going to type in that same thing, echo, dollar sign, question mark, and I get zero again. Now, type in false and hit enter. And then type in the same thing, echo, dollar sign, question mark, and I get a one. So what does that mean? Well, this pair of commands is built into the shell and always gives you these exit statuses. So what does this mean whenever you're working with a program? Well, you can use exit statuses to tell if your if statement actually worked. So if we use our example of the true and false commands, which will always be successful for true or unsuccessful for false, then this is what will go ahead and happen. So I'm gonna type in the following. So first we'll type in if true, semicolon, then echo, it's true. And close that out with phi. So it says it's true. Now if false, semicolon, then echo, it's not true. And close that out with phi. So it worked, cool. So the one that says true prints the output correctly while the one with false prints nothing. Now what happens if you have multiple commands in your if statement? Well, luckily you can work with that too. I can type in, for example, uh, let's start with this one with the false statement. I'm gonna add true to that. So now we have two arguments in there and then I'm going to change this to it's true. And then phi at the end, hit enter. So it says it's true. Now what if we switch those back? So this one says false and this one says true, hit enter. Now you notice that it doesn't say anything. So you will notice that the last command is the one that the if statement looks at. So the first one with true at the end works and it gives you that correct output. The second one with false at the end does not work because it's the false output. So now that we have that figured out, let's go ahead and branch over to a word from our sponsor. Incidents are inevitable. They can happen at any time and how your company responds matters. Dealing with incidents whenever they happen requires coordination between your ops and your software dev teams who are honestly unsung heroes who put out fires every single day and they just do not get enough credit. So thank you ladies and guys out there who are putting out all those fires, we appreciate you. So getting alerts immediately is critical whenever an incident occurs. That's why there's Ops Genie by Atlassian. So Ops Genie empowers your team to plan for service disruptions and stay in control. It gives teams the power to respond quickly and efficiently to unplanned issues. And it helps to notify all the right people through a smart combination of scheduling and escalation paths that take into account things like time zones and, I don't know, Christmas holidays. Now, Ops Genie also allows for deep flexibility in how, when, and where alerts are deployed, and it's supported by over 200 integrations like Jira and Amazon CloudWatch, Datadog, New Relic, a whole lot more. It tracks all the activity, it provides useful insights to improve future incident responses, and I gotta say, whenever you are running an online service for thousands or even just a few customers, they're gonna notice when something goes down and they're all going to call you or email you. And if your main op is on vacation, I don't know, spending the holidays with their family, for example, you don't wanna be the one trying to figure out how to solve the issue and get your customers back online. So Ops Genie will escalate that issue to the right person who is available. Your unsung heroes, for example, and they can solve the issue and your customers are happy, I'm happy, and that's great. Now with Ops Genie, your next incident does not stand a chance. Visit OpsGenie.com to sign up to get a free company account and add up to five team members. No credit card required, so you can totally try it out yourself. That's OpsGenie.com. Never miss a critical alert again with Ops Genie. We are now back with branching and if statements. Now, while today's journey was a pretty basic one, if statements are a crucial part of programming and it's important to understand how you use branching. 
Once you start adding things like expressions and multi-command branches, you can really, really dig deep into creating useful programs. And this is the kind of stuff that you see online all the time. Now stay tuned because coming up on Hack Tip, we will be talking about those expressions in particular and showing you how you can add those to a shell script. So until then, I wanna hear your feedback. What program are you using? Comment below and be sure to check out our sister show, Hack 5, for more great stuff just like this. Happy holidays and trust your technolust.